Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at Special Booster 1.5, and this is a purple Millenniumon deck that's basically supposed to mirror what red and blue Omnimon were doing, except this time we're doing it in purple, and this is really only possible just because purple got some really good tools that help with its overall consistency and its tempo to be able to turbo out Millenniumon. So, Going over the deck, starting with the Digitama, I'm going to be running one copy of Yaman. So Yaman is just the fifth Digitama of the deck. This could really be anything you want, but I just feel like the DP boost potential from Yaman definitely is something really, really nice, just because it could help a lot of your cards just to swing over specific numbers. But the main Digitama of the deck is going to be four copies of Demi Marimon. So Demi Marimon is just an absolute insane card for this deck just because it has this really powerful inheritable ability of on delete. You get to draw one card, then discard one card. So looting is really, really powerful because it not only just helps set up your trash because you're discarding specific cards you don't want in your hand, but you're also digging through your deck that much faster because you're actually drawing the cards, and I do think looting is just better than milling, so that's why Demi Marimon is just better for this style of deck. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running two copies of Demi Devimon. So Demi Devimon is really good just because it is a value vanilla rookie, and this card is just hyper efficient to play. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Impmon. So Impmon is really good because he has this uh, nice on-deletion ability of allowing us to trash the top three cards of our deck. We're really only utilizing Impmon in the deck just because he combos with another card in the deck, but uh, filling up our trash so that way we have access to it to pull from whatever we want or whatever we need, depending on how you build the deck, is definitely something really, really good. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Gabumon. So Gabumon is doing something very, very similar to Demi Marimon, where he has this nice inheritable ability of on delete, you get to draw two and discard one. And again, just uh, looting is really, really powerful for the deck because we dig through our deck faster and set up our trash with more specific cards from our hand. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Tapermon. So Tapermon is one of the best sacrificial fodder cards of the deck, just because he has this nice native ability of on delete draw one card. So that way, when we utilize him either to swing into the opponent's security and delete him through security checks, or if we utilize him to sacrifice him to some of our other card effects, then we're still going to be gaining a benefit of drawing a card, thus helping the overall consistency of the deck. Next, on to the champions, I'm going to be running two copies of Vilemon. So Vilemon is just the blocker of the deck, and that's really all there is to him. Next, I'm going to be running Devimon. So Devimon is really, really nice just because he has this retaliation ability, which is one of the big ways that we have at removing some of the opponent's Digimon that we can't deal with otherwise, is just by attacking into them with retaliation to use retaliation to delete them after Devimon gets deleted. And then on top of which, not only does he have the retaliation innately, but he also gives the inheritable ability of retaliation. So it even makes our higher levels that much more threatening if the opponent is trying to attack into them to clear them, then they're going to be losing their own Digimon in the process. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be four copies of Marimon. So Marimon is really only in here just because Purple finally got their champion that evos for one. So even though he's not as strong as a Dark Tyranimon or Gorillamon in terms of stats, he is a little bit more efficient to play with a little bit less DP than those cards. But again, we're really just looking to utilize this card just because he evos for one, allowing us to get into our higher stages that much faster and that much more efficiently with. Next, on to the ultimates, I'm going to be running two copies of Chimeramon. So Chimeramon is a really fantastic ultimate for the deck, just because he has this really powerful on um, play ability, where we get to delete one of our other Digimon to delete one of the opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. So the whole point of this card is for that removal ability, so that way we could try to check or halt the opponent's progress on getting to their higher levels that much faster, or if we need to just clear out some of their other Digimon, then he's a really good card for doing that as 
as well. On top of which, he has some really high synergy with uh, Tapirmon and Ipmon because he allows us to utilize it there on delete abilities more efficiently. So that way, even when we're losing a Digimon, we still get their abilities to go off. And then it also combos with Demi Miramon as an inheritable. So that way, whatever we're deleting, we're also getting that ability. So he just has some really high synergy with the deck. And then on top of which, we are going to be leaving a level 5 body on board. So that way, we could just threaten to go up into our level 6. And then from our level 6, we could then threaten to go into our level 7, making him that much more powerful of a card to think about playing. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Skull Marimon. So Skull Marimon is a really fantastic card for the deck just because he's basically acting the same as Groundramon or Manzimon for red and blue respectively, just because he is a really good tempo tool because he has a really low play cost, so if we need to play him, then we don't feel bad about just hard playing him, because similar to Chimeramon, just leaving a level 5 body on board threatens the potential of us going into a level 6, and then from our level 6 to a level 7, and then on top of which, he has a nice low evo cost compared to a lot of other Digimon in his level, so that way we could utilize him to just tempo into, again, our level 6 to go into level 7 that much more efficiently with. And then the last ultimate of the deck is going to be two copies of Lady Devimon. So Lady Devimon is a very fantastic uh, ultimate for the deck because she has this uh, really great when digivolving ability where we get to draw two cards and discard two cards. So because we are utilizing her ability when digivolving, we do get the digivolution bonus. So it's almost like we're drawing three and discarding two, which that's seeing a lot of cards and setting up whatever cards we need in our trash with. So... Uh, She's really good for just helping the overall consistency of the deck. And then on top of which, she has a really powerful inheritable ability where during your turn, once per turn, when you use an option card, then you get to delete one of your opponent's uh, level 3 Digimon. So because we're not really utilizing a whole lot of option cards, this ability isn't going to go off that often, but it still can go off and the fact that we still have that potential definitely makes her a really good card to run. Next, onto the Megas, I'm going to be running three copies of Beelzemon. So the whole reason why we're playing Itmon in the deck is to try to maximize on Beelzemon's potential, because he has this uh, really great uh, Warp and Digivolve ability, where you basically get to Digivolve him off of Itmon for four instead of his normal evolution requirements, as long as we have ten or more cards in our trash. So we kind of do want to just to fill up our trash a little bit just so we could try to warp Digivolve Ipmon into Beelzemon with. Just because going from a rookie to a mega to then go into our level 7 is just really powerful and really efficient on tempo. And then on top of which, he has a really powerful when Digivolving ability where we get to delete one of the opponents at level 4 or lower Digimon. So he's also acting as a great removal card on top of all of the other things the card is doing. Next, I'm going to be running three copies of Boltmon. So Boltmon is basically the Plesiomon or Phoenixmon for purple. So he's basically fulfilling all of the same roles as those cards, where he has a really low play cost in case that ever comes up. Uh, he has a uh, really low evo cost, which is the main reason why we're looking at this card. So that way we could go into our level 7 that much easier. And then he also has some uh, really decent DP naturally. So he is just a very aggressive card to be playing around with. And then the last Mega of the deck is going to be four copies of Millenniumon. So Millenniumon is what the whole deck is centered around, is just trying to get to Millenniumon as fast and as efficiently as we possibly can, just so we could then sit on Millenniumon and kind of just control and dominate the game from there. So uh, what Millenniumon is doing is he has two big abilities. His first ability is a when digivolving ability, where we get to return one of the opponent's Digimon back to the bottom of their deck. So this is a really powerful form of removal because it'll bypass any on-delete abilities and certain protections that some Digimon might have. And then on top of which, he even has his own on-delete ability, where if this card has any Digivolution cards in him when he's deleted, then you get to replay Millenniumon for free. So he has like the self-reviving ability, making him a very sticky body and a really hard card to deal with. And the only real weakness to this type of ability is if you see other Millennium Mons, where they could then just bypass the on-delete ability and put them onto the bottom. Or if the opponent has D-Digivolve, so that way they just basically get rid of him off the top into the level 6 or lower. But if you are able to just set up a really powerful Millennium Mon, then he should easily dominate the board because of how hard this card is to deal with sometimes. 
Next, onto the option cards, I'm running two copies of Night Raid. So Night Raid is a pretty okay option card, just because it's a very low-cost option card. So if we need to utilize it with uh, Lady Devimon, then it's really good at that. And then on top of which, the main purpose on why we're even running Night Raid is because of its main ability to play a purple level 3 Digimon from our trash for free. We don't get any of its on-play effects, but none of them have on-play effects. So the main target that we want to utilize Night Raid with is going to be on Itmon. So that way we could then use uh, Itmon to warp Digivolve into Beelzemon to go into Millenniumon right afterward. So just being able to grab back your Itmons to do that whole line of play is the big primary reason on why we're running Night Raid. But it also has some really other good applications at being able to play basically any of our other level 3s in case we need to utilize them for some various other things. And then it even has a really nice security ability of activating its main effect, so that way it basically is almost like a surprise Digimon on an option card, and that could create some extra pressure on the opponent to try to help you close out the game faster with. And then the last option card of the deck is going to be two copies of Trump Sword. So Trump Sword, for all intents and purposes, is Purple's Gaia Force, so we are just utilizing this card as our hard removal card, so that way if the opponent digivolves into something and it's unsuspended, then we are just at liberty to utilize this card to just straight up delete it to get rid of that threat off of the board in case we can't utilize any of our other cards to clear the Digimon out. And then on top of which, it has a really nice uh, security ability of being able to activate its main effect. So that way, when it's checked in the security, it could also have the potential of deleting one of the opponent's Digimon to just clear the body off the board and uh, potentially save us from lethal positions. And then the last uh, card of the deck is going to be the only Tamer card of the deck, and that's going to be two copies of Matt Ishida. So the purple mat is really important for the deck because he is the memory fixing tamer of the deck. So if our memory is less than three, then Matt will always set us to three. So he prevents us from being memory starved or memory deprived. And then on top of which, the big reason why we're playing the card is for his on playability because his on playability is really important, allowing us to return one purple Digimon or one purple option card from our trash to our hand. So this ability to just bring back a purple card from our trash is really, really important because we are running a slightly lower mech account than blue or red Omni from 1.0, and that's kind of like the template I used to make this deck with. So having Matt to basically grab back ideally a mega to then be able to replay a Millennium on is really, really powerful. But he also has the potential and opportunity to grab back basically almost any card we want outside of Millennium on. And that's like the big reason on why we're playing the card is so that way we could set up our trash to figure out what is the best card that we need to grab out of our trash with Matt. And then Purple just has a whole bunch of other really powerful tools and tech pieces that you could think about utilizing to customize the deck to make it your own. So you could think about utilizing Gazimon just because Gazimon has this great ability where during all players' turns, then your opponent can't gain memory except by Tamer effects. So this could help shut out their ability to gain memory, so you could deprive them a little bit more and stop them from trying to gain memory to extend some of their plays with. Then you could also think about utilizing Black Gatomon just because she has this nice security ability where at the end of the security battle, then you get to play this card for free. So being able to get a free level 4 out to then Digivolve with or utilize as fodder can just be really, really good for the deck. Then you also have access to Myotismon as another tempo piece, just because he does have a low evo cost as a level 5 compared to a lot of other level 5s. So if you want to go pure tempo and just run Skull and Myotis, then you're at liberty to do so. Then there's just a whole bunch of really powerful supporting Megas that, that you can think about utilizing with the deck. So you could utilize Venom Myotismon for some extra pressure because he has Security Attack plus 1, he has 12,000 DP, and whenever the opponent is going to try to aggress or suspend their Digimon for various effects, then you get to gain one memory for doing so, which means you get to take away one of the opponent's memory for doing those actions. You also have access to Piedmon, so if you want to build the deck more Beelzemon Piedmon focused, then you're more than welcome to do so. Just because Piedmon has an on playability where you get to res at two level four or lower purple Digimon from your trash, 
and that's really powerful at creating a board state. And then because you are just raw playing a Mega, then you just go into Millennium Mon right after you Piedmon. Piedmon also rises in Impmon as a potential target, so that way you could then utilize Impmon to go into Beelzemon with. And then he also has the Retaliation ability, so that makes him a little bit on the harder side to deal with. So he's just another really good supporting Mega. You could also think about running Metal Garurumon and some of the Metal Garurumon stuff, just because the Metal Garurumon line is actually pretty decent and pretty aggressive. And then one of the big targets that you could utilize Metal Garurumon's when attacking for to res it purple level 3 with is, again, Itmon to then go into Beelzemon with, to then go into Millenniumon off of either the Beelzemon or Metal Garurumon. So you're kind of seeing this similar pattern where a lot of your supporting Megas are going to have the ability to revive Impmon to go into Beelzemon to then go into Millenniumon with. Mastimon is no different, where she has a nice uh, digivolving ability where you get to trash uh, the top card of both players' security stacks, so she's acting as pseudo burn, so that way you could try to be more aggressive with and try to close out the game faster. And then on top of which, she also has another res ability, except you do get the on play effects from her res ability, so that allows you to run a little bit slightly different cards if you feel like it. But again, the whole point is to try to res something for value. You could think about utilizing Lilithmon and a couple of more option cards, so that way you can make it Lilithmon even more valuable, because Lilithmon does have some good synergy with Beelzemon, because they both want to be at that magic 10 number for having cards in your trash, and then she adds option cards back to your hand, she makes your option cards more efficient, and then you could then utilize her to res an Impmon with Night Raid, so then you could again Digivolve into uh, Beelzemon, and then Digivolve either of them into Millenniumon. And then you could also run something like the Mallow Myotismon engine, just because uh, being able to just play a Mallow Myotismon efficiently just allows you to get a good mega body on board that you could then utilize to just get into uh, Millennium on with whenever you're comfortable. And then one of the better option cards that you could think about adding in the deck for some extra control elements is Heat Viper, just because Heat Viper allows you to delete one of your Digimon to delete two of the opponent's level 4 Digimon, so it's just another good removal option to think about running. But for the most part, like I said, the whole goal of the deck is to try to get into Millennium on as fast and efficient as possible, and it utilize uh, purple for a lot of its unique tools and elements to both res and control the field with. So it really makes for a really interesting deck to just figure out how you want to just get into Millennium on faster with. You could play around with uh, all of the other options and uh, change some of the ratios up to, again, fit your needs, but the whole point is that. Uh, to just get into Millennium on with and try to control the board from there. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, I'll have the deck list down in the description below. And down in the description below will also be a uh, TCG Player affiliate link. So when you buy your cards off of TCG Player using that link, some of the money will go to support me and the channel. And then on top of all of that, feel free to tell me your thoughts about the deck down in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.